Hi. Now we've got to find the range of the inverse function f to the minus 1 where f is such that x is the natural log of 4 minus 2x and x is less than 2 and x is any real number in the domain. Now to do something like this is very straightforward if you know a basic concept which uh, I'll explain to you at the end why it works but that concept is that the range of the inverse function is always the same as the domain of the original function so for this answer what we've basically got is that the range of f to the minus 1 of x is basically then that f to the minus 1 of x is less than 2, the same as the domain here of f of x. So, why is this the case? Well, it works like this, that if you've got any graph, let's say we have our axes x and y, and we have some function of x, let's just say it looks something like this, Okay, here's our graph of y equals f of x and the domain of this function goes from here to this end point here, say, okay, along there. Let's just do that with a dotted line. Alright, now the inverse function f to the minus 1 of x is related to this graph. It is a reflection in the line y equals x. So if this was the line y equals x, the diagonal through here, we would expect to see the inverse function look something like this. Coming up like that. Okay. And so let's just make it a little bit longer there. This would be y equals f to the minus 1 of x. And the range of this function would go from this point here, the lowest point, up to the highest point, which we'll say is just up here. So it'd be down through here. Now can you see that if we look at this point, the domain of our red function, y equals fx, it gets mirrored across y equals x to this point here. And if we look at this point, the upper point of the domain of y equals f of x, if we mirror this across y equals x, it goes over here to this point here, the upper point of the range of the inverse function of f of x. So hopefully you can see that if we mirror the domain of y equals f of x in the line y equals x, it becomes the range of the inverse function. Okay, well, that brings us now to the end of this video.